myself, Dr. Divya, Assistant Professor, Department of Chemistry, Institute of Analytical Engineering. So, in this session, we will understand the refining of uh, petroleum, the crude oil into different products. So, we will go into the topic. So, here are the topics, petroleum refining and the refineries, the uh, refineries are places where we do the refining of petrol and there's different stages of refining and ultimately the products that we obtain during refining. So, what is this refining exactly? Petroleum refining is defined as chemical, thermal and physical separation of crude oil. So, as soon as, as soon as mining we get, we get crude oil, crude oil. So, this crude oil is used to refine, is refined to get different products. So, that is done through chemical, thermal and physical separation of refining oil into different fractions. So, the obtained products are nothing but fractions. So, these fractions are again reprocessed to get ultimate products for the commercial usage. So, these fractions are processed further through separation and conversion into finished petroleum products. So, finished petroleum products are obtained only after thorough processing of these fractions that are obtained through refining. So, refinery is a place or the facility where this process takes place. So, this is the refinery that if, uh, we see in the picture. So, this is a huge complex uh, structure uh, where, place where we send the crude oil into different processing techniques so that it, it takes place the separation. So, refinery separates the crude oil into small fractions in order to obtain about 2500 separate products. From uh, crude oil, we can get uh, 2500 products upon refining and separation and further processing to get appropriate products. So, these refineries are complex capital intensive. It means in lot of investment lot of investment is required for a refinery. So, uh, manufacturing facilities that convert crude oil into variety of valuable products. So, any oil as soon as it is imported, it is uh, crude oil is uh, going to refine. So, that refined products will give different petroleum products. So, the refining process uses chemistry to break, reshape and recombine the molecules of crude oil into value-added products like gasoline, diesel and aviation fuels. So, the uh, petrol or the diesel or gasoline that we use in our daily applications like for automobiles and for jet fuels are obtained after proper refining of this crude oil. So, what are the stages? These are the main stages. Immediately after we get the crude oil, what we do first is the separation of solid impurities. So, removal of the solid impurities is an important step as soon as we get crude oil. So, here what happens? The crude oil is a mixture of solid, liquid and gaseous substance. So, as we are getting from the earth, it has all types of matters in that crude oil. So, this is allowed to stand undisturbed for some time when heavy mat uh, solid particles settle down and gaseous gases evaporate. So, once we keep it undisturbed, undisturbed for some time, what happens? This, uh, the solid particles will be sedimenting here in the form of dirt, sand, slit and scales. These will be settling down and there is crude oil that is coming up. So, the separation of phases takes place. Separation of different phases. Separation of oil and inorganic phase. So, oil is an organic phase. Inorganic phases 
takes place. So here the water also gets accumulated in the form of dirt. It will combine with the dirt and the waxy layers or the heavy oils will be here only and the only the crude oil and the lighter oils will go top. So this is the crude oil after we obtain after solid a removal of solid impurities. So this supernatant liquid is then centrifuged wherein the solids get removed. So after centrifugation, even if there are very smaller particles, it set it down so that they can be removed. The next is the removal of water. So if at all there is water content present that can be removed from this process, Cottrell's process, wherein the crude oil obtained from the earth crust in the form of a suitable a stable emulsion of uh, oil and brain nothing but salts brain is nothing but salts presence of salts so this can be removed so how is it removed the this picture when passed between two highly charged electrodes so we have electrodes here so highly charged electrodes kept uh, uh, an opposite direction so whenever the solution or the uh, crude oil is passed through these electrodes they will destroy the emulsion films and the colloidal water droplets coalesce into bigger drops and get separated out from the oil. It means whenever it is going through due to the electrical field, electrical field that is present, electrical field that is present, the emulsion oil will evaporate. So uh, they will be going top layer and whatever the droplets or the water moisture present will be coalesce. So they come together, coalesce is nothing but they combine together to form, combine together to form bigger bigger drops. So that bigger drops will separate from the oil. So this is the crude oil that we obtain and this is the water droplets, crude oil top layer is the crude oil and the bottom heavier one will be the water that can be separated out. Then is the removal of harmful impurities. What happens here? So in order to remove harmful impurities that generally contain sulfur compounds in the crude oil. So we are having sulfides. So it is treated with the copper oxide. So oil when it is treated with this crude oil, when it is treated with copper oxide forms copper sulfide and the oil is left over. So this copper sulfide can be removed. So the sulfur compounds get converted to insoluble copper sulfide. So this is insoluble so it will precipitate and which can be removed by filtration. Simple filtration can be done to remove this uh, copper sulfide. So then the desalting. This process is called desalting wherein the minerals like the substances like sodium chloride and magnesium chloride its presence will corrode the refining equipment so whenever there is presence of sodium magnesium salts will cause corrosion to that equipment that is used in the refineries so we have to remove them to avoid scale formation so that we see generally in our uh, homes also like in domestic usage also if there is heavy salts present in the bore water we see forming scales at the bottom of the uh, or at the edges of that vessel. So that scale scale has to be removed. Uh, that is possible only removal of these uh, ions from the oil or the water but that we use. So here in the crude oil it is a time to remove these uh, sodium chloride and magnesium chloride salts from the oil to avoid this corrosion and uh, scale formation. So these can be removed by techniques like electrical desalting and dehydration. So in electrical desalting what happens? There is application of electricity again. So here what happens? The uh, water when we are sending, the crude oil when we are sending, there is a mixing valve here. So upon uh, mixing the it will mix with the water so whatever salts are present uh, once we send the water along with these the uh, the salts present in the crude oil will get dissolved into this water and that water can be removed the salted water will be removed this is how the sodium chloride and any magnesium chloride salts are removed 
So this desalting process contains three main stages, heating, mixing and settling. Heating, mixing and settling. So the crude oil is heated up to 135 to 141 degrees centigrade in a train of heat exchanger operating in two parallel sections. So this is nothing but the exchanger that we are talking about. Exchanger that you present. So it is the uh, oil is heated to 135 to 141 degrees centigrade. So in two, uh, there are two sections, so desalter 1 and 2 depending on our crude oil property. So the temperature in desalting is maintained by operating bypass valve of heat exchanger. So there is, uh, there are uh, uh, valves that are present that will be uh, helping or uh, maintaining the temperature inside this, uh, inside this desalter. So single steel desalting with the water recycle is usually justified if salt content in crude is less than 40 ppb. If at all the sodium or magnesium salts are magnesium salts are less than 40 ppb, only single cycle of single cycle of this desalting is sufficient to remove that percentage of um, uh, corrosion causing salts from that crude oil. So double uh, salt, uh, double stage desalting is better for residuum hydro testing. So if at all there is a residuous formation, so then we uh, go for the double desalting process. By injecting water, the salts dissolved in the water and the solutions are separated. The salted water is nothing but due to presence of NaCl or magnesium Cl that are uh, uh, containing, uh, that are being extracted from the crude oil. So after removal of the salt water, the crude oil no more contains any uh, salts that are present. Next goes to the fractional distillation. After removal of moisture and the salts, the fractional distillation takes place. So first what happens? First we are removing solid impurities. Solid impurities are removed. Then what happened? Water is removed. Then salts are removed. And in the fourth stage, we are, we are sending to fractional distillation, fractional distillation. So in these, uh, this is the main process. So before uh, fractional distillation, these three steps are important to remove impurities. So heating of crude oil around 4000 degrees centigrade in an iron retort produces hot vapor. So we are sending this crude oil to a furnace that will be heating the oil and this will uh, cause the uh, vaporize the oil and send to the uh, uh, distillation. So this which is allowed to pass through fractionating column. So this fractionating, this is passing through the fractionating column. It is a tall cylindrical tower containing a number of horizontal stainless steel trays. So these are the stainless steel trays that are present in a fractionating column. So at shorter distances, they are present in shorter distances and is provided with a small chimney covered with loose cap. So this is having a chimney here with a loose cap to, uh, to uh, allow the evaporated gases to escape. So as the vapor goes up, they get cooled gradually and fractional, fractional condensation takes place. So as we go up, the heavier will be settling here and uh, lighter uh, me, uh, fractions will go up. So that gets cooled and this is due to condensation process, condensation process. So higher boiling fraction condenses first, later the lower boiling fractions. So wherever the product that is having higher boiling point will condense first due to its high boiling point. So that will condensing and goes first, whereas the lower boiling point will follow. So this is the process in which oil refineries separate crude oil into different more uh, hydrocarbon products based on relative molecular weights in a distillation tower. So these have different molecular weights. So the products or the fractions have different molecular weights. The fractions will be having different molecular weights. 
So this is the first step in the processing of crude oil and it is considered to be the main separation process as it performs the initial rough separations of different fuels. So this is a main important process wherein we get different fuels. So depending on this process, we can decide how many products we are going to get in the separation. So the different components that are separated out during this process are known as fractions. So these are the final products but there are light, medium and heavy uh, distillates. They are called light distillate, medium distillate and heavy distillates, distillates that are obtained. So they are called fractions, fractions. So the, from these uh, distillates uh, we get uh, fuel, oil, diesel, kerosene, petrol, butane and propane gases. So these fractions are separated out including gasoline, diesel, kerosene and bitumen. Bitumen is a heavier one and fractional distillation allows a lot of useful compounds or products to be made from crude oil with many environmental concerns for uh, use of those useful products. So this procedure will separate lot of products but they have some environmental concerns for the usage. So we need to go for further processing before we use for any applications. So what are the stages of refi refining, distillation and separation, then conversion uh, or uh, upgradation and desulfurization or sweating. So these are the different uh, stages that are present in refining technique. So in distillation what happens? First stage, distillation or fractionation. So in this step, the crude oil will be separated into many hydrocarbons. Uh, uh, mixture is boiled here. This is the boiling point uh, stage, boiling stage, and recondensed to separate the crude oil into different, different, different components. Different components. These are the components that are obtained based on their boiling point. If at all the boiling point is around 20 degrees centigrade then it is a LPG gas that we are obtaining. If at all if it is 70 degrees it is the chemical. So that we will see in detail how they get separated. So the components that are heavier to boil will be collecting at the lower part of the column. So this is a heavy oil. Heavy oil will be at the bottom because it has a higher boiling point, heavy at the bottom, and the lighter will travel through the uh, travel through the fraction distillation column. So lighter components are easier to boil and will be collected at the upper part of the column. Very heavy components which are unable to boil will leave from the top of the um, column and a stream known as residue. So uh, very heavy components that are unable to boil will leave from the bottom. Here we have an uh, outlet. So uh, very high um, boiling point having high boiling point will be unable to boil. So they will be removed as a residue from the outlet. So, well, very light components will evaporate from the top of the column. So, very light will be like LPG gas that will be evaporated that will go into the stream and will be collecting. So, this stream is known as a liquefied petroleum gas or LPG gas. So hydro processing, the next step or the processing step is the hydro processing. What is this hydro processing like desulfurization? So most of the impurities are sulfur that is present. So to meet environmental concerns or specifications or to assist for the processing, some components that undergo a process known as hydro processing. So the object of this process is to remove sulfur from component strip. So we got some naphtha. So if you see here, there is some volatile naphtha that is present so that will be sending uh, sent to the heater so that will be uh, into uh, processed through hydrogen injector so depending on the boiling point so this process will consume hydrogen to assist uh, sulfur removal how does it do in the form of hydrogen sulfide when we are sending hydrogen to through this gas it will form hydrogen sulfide this will evaporate like it will be removed as gas hydrogen sulfide and ammonia 
So the sulfur removed from this process is converted into pure liquid sulfur and is sold to local industry for uh, production of acids and fertilizers. So if at all there is presence of sulfur that can be liquefied and finally sent to local industry for production of uh, uh, preparing acids and in the fertilizers for adding in the fertilizers. So this is the process where we see uh, removing the sulfur from this particular crude oil. Why we have to really remove this? If at all if it is present it will give burning smoke that is a very hazardous to uh, environment as well for the humans. So next stage is the reforming or uh, platforming. So this process converts a low value component known as naphtha. So this low value uh, component product known as it will form into reformate or platformate. So this reformate has a much higher octane number. So it is increasing the octane number of that particular uh, naphtha. So this heavier naphtha can be uh, removed. So wherever uh, to convert into its useful form. So octane and is used for gasoline blending. So ultimately that will be used in the gasoline blending. So the reformate that is forming will have a carbon structure from C4 to C10. So however, Previously, it has a low octane number and now it is increasing. So that can be used for gasoline blending, blending, blending of this gasoline that is obtained during crude uh, uh, distillation. So for motor gasoline with high octanes that is required and benzene that contains low percentage of uh, benzene and also aromatics less than 15%. So in that case, we can this will help in removing these aromatics so that uh, it has a good uh, uh, application. So this can be achieved using a platinum uh, catalyst. So this conversion is done through platinum catalyst. So the catalytic reformer, uh, it is nothing but is used as a catalyst. The platinum is used as catalyst. So what happens here? The cyclo or wherever the cycloparaffins are present, that will have that will form aromatics with having high. Octo octane number. So this is how the uh, uh, low uh, value component can also be converted to uh, some product that can be useful in further processing. So that is uh, in the reforming or platforming procedure. Next is a catalytic cracking. So this conversion process involves breaking up of larger hydrocarbons into smaller molecules using combination of heat and catalytic action. Why we are using catalytic also? Because to enhance the reaction. Enhance, enhance the reaction. So this will help in forming the product more uh, easily and feasibly. So a byproduct of this process is coke. So coke is a byproduct that is forming a during this process which is burned to generate steam and electricity. So this catalytic cracking uh, helps in forming coke or carbon that can be used in generating electricity and steam. So what are the products in this refining? So as soon as we send this crude oil during separation, the fractions uh, uh, in the decreasing in density and boiling point will be in the top. Low boiling point and density will be at the top and high boiling point and high density will be at the bottom. Will be at the bottom. So, the, if at all, if it is a boiling point is around 20 degrees centigrade, which is very, very low. So, that is why it will collect at the top and it has liquefied, it is nothing but the liquefied petroleum gas or LPG that we are using for our daily cooking purpose. Because it has low boiling point, it is flammable and giving us the opportunity to cook. So next is the, uh, it has a, um, a carbon number from C1 to C4 only and next is a 70 degree centigrade products that are obtained with the carbon content of C5 to C9 carbon. So naphtha that is used in different chemicals. So these smaller molecules will have low boiling point, very volatile, 
flows easily and ignites easily. So this, if we see the naphtha and the gases will be igniting easily and the petrol also has uh, around 120 degree centigrade. So which is also a low boiling point, like it has carbon content from C5 to C10 molecules. So it is used as a gasoline uh, in different automobiles. Then with a boiling point of 170 degree centigrade, C10 to C16 carbon content, a kerosene that is also used as a jet fuel uh, for uh, uh, in the jet fuels. So this is also an application. And next is the 270 degree centigrade, it's the diesel oil that is obtained here. So with the carbon content C14 to C20 used in the trains for the fuel of uh, trains. Then is a lubricating oil which is having carbon content of C20 to C50. So it is like for example waxes and shoe polishes that we use. So it is the, if you see the red column is like heavier. This is heavier. They are becoming heavier. The, so the structure is also varying. See, this is a glass, a gas, liquid and then solids are forming. So lubricating oils so that from which we can make waxes or polishes. Then 600 degree centigrade boiling point. Then it is having a carbon content like C20 to C70. And that forms the fuel oil used in ships and factories. Then uh, C70 greater than C70 is for residues, starch that we use in the lying of roads, lying roads. So these are the different applications and the products that are obtained in the refining technique of crude oil. So these more large molecules are the solids that are forming have high boiling point, not very volatile, does not easily flow, so does not ignite also. So that is why we are using for the out, outside purpose, so like roads, uh, ships and factories. So these are the products that are obtaining from the refining. So what are happening, what are the first steps that are uh, uh, done. So in the initial process as soon as we get crude oil, as soon as we get crude oil, we have to remove, remove solids as much as possible. The solids has to be removed so to avoid contamination. Then water that is present, water, water from that, then salts, salts to be removed, then then it is going to fractional distillation. Fractional distillation. So these are the important steps in which we get products after further processing of these fractions. These are the different fractions that we obtain and after processing we get products that are very useful for our daily life and also for the industrial purpose. So refinery gases has very low boiling point, so heating purpose and petrol has 20 to 70 degree centigrade and fueling purpose, naphtha 70 to 160 degree centi centigrade. So these are the fractions, these are the fractions that we see in this column. So they are used for the plastics and chemicals, kerosene has boiling point between 160 to 250 degree centigrade used in jet fuels rockets, lightning, paraffin, then diesel, from diesel we can uh, be used for the truck fuel, the residue group, in residue group we have fuel oil, lubricating oil, waxes. So this has got a temperature uh, boiling point of 300 to 370 degree centigrade, it can be used in the power stations, ships, fraction reduction, polishing of shoes and all. And then butamine, butamine has a greater than 370 degree centigrade. So that is why we are using in the out, outside applications like road construction, roof uh, shingles, then roof and basement ceilings. So these are the different applications that are used in our common, commonly used in our daily life with uh, different fractions that are obtained after further processing. They are uh, uh, getting the valuable products from the crude oil. Thank you. Like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.